Did you know Nissan EVs have traveled 8 billion miles? Just a quick trip to Pluto and back. And what did we learn along the way? Well, that an EV can take on the world, like the Nissan LEAF. It can move racing forward and take your breath away, like the all-new Nissan Aria. We learned to make EVs that electrify. 8 billion miles driven by LEAF owners globally since 2010. Aria not yet available for purchase. Expected availability late fall. Subject to change. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Real Life Ghost Stories. Thank you for coming back to listen to the second part of our instalment on Dear David. How did you feel about the first part? Um, yeah, a little unsettled. I wouldn't say I'm terrified yet, but I'm a little unsettled. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Our movie review for this week, considering it's nearly Christmas! Ding, 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 ding. Da, 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 da. I love Christmas. It makes me really happy. So we decided to do a Christmas film review for you this week. And our Christmas film review is Krampus. So Krampus was released in 2015. It has 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. Can we please just take a minute to do that? At last. At last, we finally found a film that's... Something over half. R- yeah, over a half. And it has 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb, which genuinely is quite impressive considering the film that it is. So, Dan, what did you think of Krampus? I think that it was actually pretty decent for an alternative kind of Christmas film. Because it had all the usual tropes of a Christmas film that you would expect. Yeah, so like the fighting families, the kind of unliked family members that come to stay for Christmas that you just sort of have to deal with. The film started off with a commentary on the consumerism around Christmas, which I thought was really interesting, and materialism. And it sort of played on the tropes of normal Christmas films, but kind of satired them an awful lot. And actually, I thought it was quite good. What I watched of it. You watched most of it this time. You didn't have to pay as much attention as the last one because you didn't have to read dialogue. I thought it was very good. It's more like a monster movie than a horror movie. Yeah, it was. And I like a monster movie. Yeah, and it was very good. And the premise is basically that there is a family that has an old German grandmother. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) The end. And it's about their Christmas story. And there's the youngest son is very much still into Christmas. He gets right at the start of the film. He gets into a fight during a nativity play uh, because someone told the little kids that Santa wasn't real and he was trying to protect Christmas. And so you find out this guy's really into Christmas and he he writes a letter to Santa under the uh, push of his grandma. So he writes his letter to Santa. He's very positive about Christmas. And then his cousins come over and it all hell breaks loose. And basically ends up getting disgruntled with Christmas, tearing up his letter, throwing out the window and then shit hits the fan yes because apparently if you don't accept santa you get something else i'm gonna spoiler it's krampus yes it's called krampus yeah i don't know why you're being cryptic about that i think i was was trying to build up the suspense oh i ruined it yeah you did but it's fine you ruined it yeah and it, it like dan was saying it's basically a monster movie really at the heart of it it's about being nice to each other at christmas yep. that's it but it's it's good i mean it's it's got a lot of reminiscence of is it toy soldiers yeah small soldiers small, small soldiers, soldiers yeah. yeah that kind of um the toys coming to life and uh, attacking them yeah there's some pretty gruesome looking toys in it as well but also there's a cameo by the um gingerbread man from shrek Ah, yes, there is. There are also some dolls in it to Dan's great disdain. He did not enjoy that at all. Yeah, that's because the that's because the one doll that's in it is a doll's face on a snowy owl's body, and it has fangs, and it's also wearing a veil. Did you not have one of them when you were growing up? No, I clearly missed out. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously did. So, what would you give it out of five? I'd probably give it a good strong three and a half, I think. It was quite, for a Christmas, like for an alternative Christmas movie, I thought it was quite good. It still kept like the Christmas tropes and stuff, but it was just like a darker take on it. And I think it's more, it's more of a satire, I think, than it is a serious horror. I don't know. If your kids were like playing up, I'd be like, right. See this shit? This is going to happen to you. You five-year-old son. (laughs) Yeah, five years old and they're sobbing, (laughs) terrified that Krampus is going to come and get them. Yeah, so I would give it three out of five, but mostly because I didn't actually watch most of it. Again. And let's be honest, like if you want a, you don't really want like a pure, dark, horrendous horror for Christmas, do you? No, you really don't. Ruin your Christmas a little bit. So if you wanted, if you wanted a scary, in inverted commas, film to watch over Christmas, 
Go for it, Krampus. Just have at it. But beware, there's two Krampuses that were released in 2015. There's the Krampus that we watched, which was 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb and 67% on Rotten Tomato. And then there's Krampus the Christmas Devil, which was also released in 2015, which has 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Yes. Oh. It's one of those twin film things where they both, two studios, release films about the same things at the same time. Happens quite often. Oh, that's mad. Like Mac and Me and E.T. You're like obsessed with Mac and Me. The joy that Dan had when Starfleet Foxes tweeted him about Mac and Me. Just Starfleet Foxes, so you're aware, you bring joy to Dan's life. Absolutely. You do. You specifically. So la- It's a season of giving back. That's why Kia is expanding our partnership with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and making a donation for every eligible new car purchase during the holidays through Kia's Accelerate the Good program. Kia, movement that inspires. Kia will donate $8 for every new Kia vehicle that is purchased or leased at authorized Kia dealerships and delivered to retail customers between November 11th, 2022 and December 31st, 2022. With a guaranteed minimum donation of $1 million to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. See kia.com slash season of giving back for details. Hurry into Ram Power Days and experience the raw power of the Ram 3500. With available best-in-class torque and towing among 350 3500 pickups when properly equipped. Strap yourself in for one powerful ride in the Ram TRX. With the most horsepower of any gas pickup ever built. Or the Ram 1500. Awarded number one in driver appeal among light-duty pickups by J.D. Power three years in a row. Hurry into Ram Power Days going on now. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Last episode, we introduced the story of Dear David. The second half is way worse and I, I am regretting doing this story because I just can't stop thinking about Dear David. It freaks me out so much. If you didn't listen to our last episode, you need to go back and listen to that shit now because none of this is going to make sense if you don't listen to the first episode. Adam Ellis, otherwise known as as the Twitter handle at Moby underscore dickhead, began tweeting a story in August 2017 and that story was about his house being haunted or him rather being haunted by the ghost or the spirit of a little boy and the little boy's head, head was caved in. It looked like a nutsack. And it looks like a ball sack, according to Dan. And apparently, according to a dream, dear David, as is the ghost name, died in an accident in a store. And weird stuff has been happening in Adam Ellis's house. So his cats have been acting strangely. He got a phone call or loads of phone calls from a mysterious number. And eventually he went on holidays to Japan. And the last time we heard from Adam Ellis, he was just leaving Japan. So we're going to pick straight up from where we left off. Are you ready? No. Let's do this. Saturday, October the 14th, 2017. Weird things have been happening with the electricity in my apartment this week. First, two bulbs have burned out in the hallway in less than a week. At this point, I've just left it alone rather than get a ladder again. But the strangest thing has to do with the backlight on my TV. It's an LED strip that plugs into the TV itself via a USB. The TV has to be on in order for the backlight to be on but last night the backlight was flickering on and off all by itself. I noticed it just some time before dawn when I woke up and went into the kitchen to get some water. I had barely gotten back into bed again when I saw a faint light come on in the living room. After a few seconds, it went dark again. I went back into the living room and stood there watching the backlight go on and off, on and off, for at least a few minutes. It was bizarre. Eventually, it stopped. And now the backlight doesn't work at all. It's only a couple of months old, so it shouldn't be dead already. Anyway, I couldn't get back to sleep, so I went to the diner near my apartment. It was the only thing open at 4am. When I got back home, the sun was starting to come up, so I figured I might as well shower and go into work early. I showered and brushed my teeth and then headed into the bedroom to get dressed. As I passed the front door, I thought I heard a faint scratching sound from the other side. It was so soft, I wasn't sure if it had really happened. I went over to the door, but I was too scared to look through the peephole. I couldn't bring myself to actually put my face that close to the sound, so I opted to take a photo through the peephole instead. Since there's a skylight just outside my door, the hall was awash in a faint yellow-green light. I snapped a couple of photos. At first the pictures didn't seem like anything, just blurry nothingness. But as I analysed it, I started noticing things. Part of a face. An ear and an eye staring right back at me. I think maybe it's time to get someone else involved. It's obvious that this is not going to stop until I do something. October the 26th, 2017. Sorry for the radio silence the past couple of weeks. First, I had a friend come over to do some cleansing stuff. She did the whole apartment and then the hallway. 
A lot of self-proclaimed professional mediums have reached out, plus about half a dozen ghost hunter TV shows. I've declined them all because I don't really want strangers in my house sensationalising what is going on. So instead I had a friend come over and cleanse the place, and for about a week or so it seemed like it worked. Things appeared to go back to normal. The cats weren't gathering at the door anymore. I stopped having dreams. It was starting to seem like it was over. Then one morning last week I was walking to work and past the shuttered warehouse as usual. This time all the metal doors were wide open, sunlight pouring in. The warehouse was still mostly empty except for one thing. There was a hearse parked near the back wall. Whoa. The warehouse has been closed for over two months. I've no idea why it was open that day. Nobody was around. It was so weird but I tried not to think about it. It's not all that strange to see a hearse I guess. I tried to put it out of my mind and the next several days were uneventful. But something else happened last night. It was around 11 or so and I was watching TV on the couch. I went into the dining room to get a drink from the fridge and noticed both the cats sitting by the far window staring up at it. The window looks out onto the roof of the business next door. I glanced out the window but didn't see anything. I figured that maybe there was a mouse in the wall or something and I shrugged and grabbed a beer from the fridge. As I went into the kitchen to get the bottle opener I noticed something. There's a window in the kitchen which looks out onto the same roof and someone was standing on the roof staring at me. I immediately ducked down. I reached up and flicked off the light. I peered over the window sill but couldn't see much. My phone was in my pocket so I grabbed it and took a photo. It was blurry and dark but I swear someone was out there. I tried to take a better photo but the figure had disappeared. That's it. That looks like a grey to me. Can you stop saying that please because I am actually cold with fear right now. I closed all the blinds and made through the, made sure the door was locked and then drank like five more beers until I was too drunk to be scared. I feel that. I feel like if this happened to us and you saw something, you'd be like opening the window shouting at him. Like, what are you doing? Get down for there, you stupid idiot. Or something more obscene. But then yesterday, after I read this one, I had to go and close the curtains in the spare room because our spare room window looks out onto the conservatory. Yeah, but that's because there's the anticipation. I'm saying if it, had, if it just happened, if you looked happened to look out a window without knowing the story and you saw some bloke on the roof, you'd yell at him like you did when someone tried to get into the house. Yeah, it's true. But now I feel like I'm back at square one. I'm sure it was him. He's not going away. I don't know what to do. November the 6th, 2017. It's been about four months since the first time I dreamed of David. This might be long, but stick with me. Last night I dreamed about him again. It was almost exactly the same as the first time I saw him. In the dream, I saw him in a chair again. I don't have the green chair in my room anymore. This time it was a recliner I've had for years. He was staring right at me just like the first time. Again, I felt paralysed and could barely move, but this time something was different. I felt mostly immobile, but I could squirm just a little bit. I felt more alert. I could move my hands somewhat. David glared at me, and I dreaded what I knew was coming. He was going to get out of the chair and come towards me like before. I had to do something. I keep my phone next to me on the bed, and I somehow managed to get hold of it. I thought, if David is going to kill me, maybe I can at least get evidence on my phone. And I started snapping pictures in the dark. Sure enough, he crawled down off the chair and began shuffling towards me. He moved slowly, like it was a struggle for him. I felt terrified, but I kept taking photos. David limped closer towards me, never taking his eyes off me. Soon I was face to face with him. He started muttering something, too quiet for me to understand. I watched as his eyes rolled back in his head until they were all white. I tried to writhe away from him but I could barely move. I stared in horror as he began crawling up onto my bed, still murmuring something. I am dying. Dying! I cannot manage this. And that's when I woke up. Same as before. Broad daylight, no trace of David anywhere. It's almost routine now. But it was a dream after all, so I got up and went to work. And after a while, the stress of the dream melted away. I wasn't even going to write about this since it wouldn't really be new information. But tonight, I noticed something that petrified me. I went onto my phone to find a picture from a couple of days ago and I saw dozens of pitch black photos from my camera roll, all from last night. <gasps> Holy mother of God. That's really creepy. It's better just to show you. Turn up your brightness because they're pretty dark. And I'm going to roll with this live because I want to see Dan's reaction to these pictures. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> That is rank and a doll. Surely that is a doll. Yeah, but it probably is a doll. But let's. Oh. So in I the was, that's way clearer than I was expecting. In it to the be first well. picture, you've got a vaguely translucent 
boy in a stripy jumper. Boy and striped pajamas. He is vile. There's no other way to describe nice. it. He's got his dented sort of goonies head. Right, that's the first one. In the second photo, he is moving towards the bed. I I can't even look oh, at these. They so actually creepy. kill me. Yeah, definitely still coming. And in. this, and the last one, David is literally in his face, in his face, inches Ugh. away from him. All right, that's a bit weird. That is very weird. Oh, it's vile. It'd be very. Isn't it? The first one's easy to have a doll sit sat on the sofa, but I don't quite know yeah. how you get it in those. Oh, that's horrible. I mean, it's creepy because he shouldn't be in your room, but I don't know whether he actually looks that scary, you know. No, but it's the it's the whole idea yeah, of it, the, isn't yeah. it? And More the fact that he, he was else. just dreaming and then. Usually, I can come up with some excuse for what's happening, but I have no logical explanation for this. So now I'm sitting here on my couch, freaking out. I certainly won't be able to sleep. I just felt like I needed to get this out. Friday, November the 17th, 2017. For everybody asking, yes, I am alive. Okay, so that shows you how many people have been paying attention to this. Because the first thing he says, what's that, like three days, six days after that happened? People are asking him whether he's still alive because he actually they actually believe he's going to get killed by this. There's a lot of people invested in this story at this point. I've been on the quiet side because there's something I'm trying to investigate and I'm not sure how to yet. I'd rather not tweet unless I have something substantial to share. It's also sort of hard to explain the logistics of what I'm trying to find out, but I'll do my best. Basically, there's a part of my apartment that I'm now just learning about. Oh. At least that's what I think. To refresh your memory, I live in a duplex. I used to live on the first floor and now I live on the second floor. It's a long, boxy building and then he's drawn what the building looks like. So you've sort of got two long, boxy apartment duplexes topped one on top of another. And then next to that, there is um, a smaller building where he thinks David was standing when he was looking at him through the window. The other week, I was tweeting the most recent update from the living room couch. About 30 seconds after I'd sent the last tweet, I heard a thump directly above my head as if someone above me had dropped something on the floor, which is impossible since I'm in the top apartment. There's also no way to access the roof. There aren't any ladders on the outside of the building. The only way you'd get to the roof is through the skylight in the hallway. There are no trees in the immediate vicinity either. It definitely wasn't pipes. It was distinctly the sound of something falling to the floor. My building is old and and makes lots of noises, but this was a new sound and it startled me. So I'm thinking, is there some secret crawl space in the house? I look all over my apartment, but I can't figure it out. So I go into the hallway and that's when something dawns on me. There's no real way to ease this. So I'll just say it. There's a mysterious hatch in my hallway. I've always known about it, but I just assumed it opened directly onto the roof. That's a creepy looking hatch. It's really high above the stairs, so I always figured it was impossible to access without some sort of fancy professional ladder. I see that hatch every morning when I leave for work and think nothing of it. But this time something dawned on me. It can't lead to the roof because it's actually below the roof. I'm about to do some math on you, so I apologize in advance. First, the skylight is flat with the roof and he checked on Google Earth to make sure. The hatch is about three feet below the skylight, meaning there's about three feet of empty space between the two openings. Mm. Maybe the hatch leads to a sort of ladder going to the roof, but even if that is the case, the hatch is level with the ceilings in my apartment. That means there's three feet of empty space all over my apartment. I was ready to explain this away for a few reasons. One, it might just be some sort of insulated space that all the residential buildings have, I'm not an architect, so what do I know? Didn't seem relevant enough at the time, so I decided I wasn't going to mention it here. But over the past week and a half, I've been hearing more things above me. A few days after the first sound, I heard a similar thump while I was in the kitchen. Then last night, I heard something small clink to the floor and roll about six feet before stopping. Something is going on up there. Maybe it's a raccoon, but maybe it's not. I also can't get over the fact that the hatch is in such a weird, inaccessible place over the stairs. I need to investigate. I'm just not sure how right now. I guess I'll try to buy a long pole off Amazon and see if the hatch even moves. I might have to buy a construction ladder. At any rate, that's why I've been MIA for a minute. I'll keep you posted when I figure out how to get up there. Tuesday, November the 28th, 2017. A lot has happened in the last week, but I was away for Thanksgiving, so I'm just now able to write it all down. The noises from the ceiling haven't let up. But the pole I ordered didn't arrive before I had to leave for the holidays, so I didn't actually get it until late Friday night. I planned to investigate the next morning and went to bed. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to an incredibly loud crash above me. It sounded like somebody had dropped a bowling ball. I bolted upright in bed and immediately felt strange. There was a weird energy all around me. I can't explain it. 
After about a minute, I heard another crash. I briefly thought about grabbing my shoes and booking it, but that would mean passing under the hatch and that seemed like a bad idea. So instead, I just listened and waited, though I'm not sure for what. The crash happened again and then again, probably 15 times in a row, followed by a long silence. Then I heard a smaller, creaky sound from the hallway. In my mind, I registered it as a footstep, but it really could have been anything. I stayed still, but there were no more more sounds after that. I lay back down, still tense and nervous, but I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up the next morning and everything seemed normal again. I got dressed and left to go get a bagel, same as every Saturday. As I made my way down the stairs, something crunched under my feet. I looked down and noticed a pile of debris on the stairs directly under the hatch. It looked like dirt, but I couldn't tell for certain. It could have been old plaster or something. I glanced up at the hatch and noticed something else peculiar. The edge of something was caught in it, barely poking out. It's hard to see because it's so far up, but I took a photo. So you can just see in the hatch, there's a little something, little black something trapped in the corner. That's all you can see. Doesn't look like a stripy t-shirt so far, so we're good. At that point, bagels were the last thing on my mind. I went back upstairs and grabbed the pole. I set my camera on the coat wardrobe at the top of the stairs and hit record just to make sure it would be caught on video if a demon burst out of the hatch. That'd be you. So we made a video and I'll post it on the Instagram. But in the video, he pushes the hatch open. Something falls down and he like books it, just legs it, obviously, like you would. I jumped out of the way and practically fell down the stairs trying to dodge whatever it was that fell. At first, I thought it was a dead squirrel, which would honestly explain a lot. It hit the steps and bounced down to the first floor. I went upstairs to get my phone and collapsed the pole, since it's so long and and unwieldy. Then I went back downstairs to investigate the object that fell. At first I wasn't even sure what it was. It was a dingy, faded black. I picked it up and realised that it was a small leather shoe. I hustled back upstairs and texted my landlord. I told him I thought there was something in the crawl space and asked if he could investigate. He said he'd come by later with a ladder and check it out. A few hours later, my landlord was on a ladder, shining a flashlight into the crawl space. I stared up at him, half expecting something to grab him and yank him into the darkness, which is so true. Like, I can just imagine him standing there going, oh, God, and trying to be really calm. He angled his flashlight all around and finally saying, there's nothing up here. But then he was like, oh, wait. And I watched as he reached up into the emptiness with his free arm. And when he pulled it back, he had something small and round in his hand. He climbed down the ladder and handed it to me. Again, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It was smooth and shiny, and at first I thought it was an old piece of candy. But it was cold and too heavy to be candy. After a second, I realised it was a marble. It was so worn that it hadn't registered as a marble at first. Its shape was also sort of weird, with a little bump on one end. My landlord seemed unbothered for the most part. And he told me to call him if I heard anything else. I went inside and headed to my office to see if I could figure out anything about the marble that somehow made its way into my ceiling. I had nothing to go on, and in short, I didn't really learn much, but I did figure out the bump on the marble, I think. Apparently in the early 1900s, they made marbles by hand and cut them with big metal scissors, which would mean that the marble is probably really old. Anyway, now I have a decrepit old shoe and a marble sitting on my dresser. I guess this is the new normal. Tuesday, December the 12th, 2017. Sorry for the long break. I haven't been feeling great the past couple of weeks and I haven't had time to update. There also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well and I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting sudden bouts of dizziness. I chalked it up to always having earbuds crammed in and made a mental note to get my ears checked. Other than that, things are pretty quiet. I sort of fooled myself into thinking that finding those items in the attic somehow ended all this. Not that that would make much sense. But last week something started to happen. Late on Wednesday, I woke up at a start and felt something strange. Like something had just been watching me. I turned on the light, but I was alone. Still, there was a tangible feeling of badness. Everything felt wrong. Sort of like when you have the flu and you wake up at night and you can't really tell where you are for a minute. It was a feeling that I'm used to. It always accompanies David. People tweet at me a lot saying he might just need help, but I'm certain that that's not the case. Every time he shows up, I feel a palpable sense of malice. That's what I felt that night. Malice. Dread. But still, I was alone and I was so tired. I wound up just going back to sleep. I've been so exhausted recently, I can barely function. The next night, the same thing happened. I woke up suddenly, feeling like I'd just missed something. Like a candle that had just gone out and I could still smell it. I thought about using the pet cam from the living room to monitor my bedroom while I slept, but the cord was too short to get the camera high enough to see the entire room, so I improvised. He's got to stop filming things, eh? Oh, you fucking wait. Oh. 
I downloaded an app that takes a photo every 60 seconds and set my phone on top of a bookcase. It's almost seven feet tall, so it had a pretty good view of my bed and the surrounding room, and then I went to sleep. Just like before, I jolted awake hours later, feeling the same unease. I turned on the light and hurried out of bed to get my phone from the bookcase. There were probably 350 photos to scroll through. The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see you can see me sleeping. I'd left a couple of night lights on just in case anything showed up. But for the first hundred or so photos, it was just me in an empty room. Yeah. Oh my God. Then suddenly he was there. Oh, fuck off, David. Standing on the chair at the foot of the bed, staring at me. Are you ready? Because this gets way worse. That is grim. It's that little thing that we saw earlier in the... In the next photo, from just a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling. Just staring. Then he appears to collapse onto the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first I thought he was dead, which obviously doesn't make any sense. I looked over at the chair, half expecting him to still be there, but the chair was empty. But then, in the next photo, he's gone. The room is totally empty again. He's gone in the next several photos too. I figured maybe that was it, but I kept swiping through the photos. About 15 photos later, he was back, standing next to the bed. It was just like the last time I saw him. That's when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest of the photos, but I knew I have to. I swiped the next photo and my heart sank to my stomach. Are you ready? He was on the bed, inches away from me, staring down at me sleeping. Oh, oh my God. That's really creepy. The next one was worse. In the next photo, he was staring right at the camera. It's hard to, it's hard to see that he's staring. It's just the, the shape of his face has changed. And after that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again, and the rest of the scroll is just me alone in my room. That is, until the last photo. Oh, my heart is like, boom, boom, boom. Here is the final photo on the scroll. <sighs> Nuts like head. Oh, wow, that's really realistic as well. That's like an actual human being. Oh, that's gross. So the final photo is... um, Hair and an ear. It's hair and an ear where obviously David is like really close to the camera. I'm at a loss for words. That malformed ear, the stringy hair. I don't even know what to think. I've looked all over my room, but I couldn't find anything. And honestly, I've been so exhausted. I don't know how to process it. That photo is is the worst photo, I think, Mm. of all of them. Even now, all I want to do is just go to sleep. December the 20th, 2017. Hey everyone, I'll be gone for the next week, visiting family back home in Montana for the holidays. It'll be nice to get away from all this for a bit. Thanks for everyone's kind words lately. I'll see you when I get back. January the 2nd, 2018. So I've been away from the city for a couple of weeks. I went home to Montana for the holidays and almost immediately I started to feel better. Less tired, less foggy. Up until now, I haven't really entertained the thought of moving, thinking that David would probably just follow me wherever I go. But when I left for Montana, everything seemed to improve. Like maybe David wouldn't follow me after all. Maybe he was tied up to the house, not me. Being home felt safer and I managed to relax a little bit. I even started browsing listings for new apartments back in New York. The last thing I wanted to do was move in the middle of winter, but after the past few months, it seemed like it might be worth it. I feel like there might be a way out. But after a few days, I started to feel strange again. One night I got up to go to the bathroom and as I stood there in the dark, I couldn't help but feel like there was something moving outside the bathroom window. The bathroom looks out into the backyard and it was pitch black. I could barely see anything, but it's Montana and there are animals passing through all the time. Sure enough, in the morning, I found animal tracks through the snow. I don't know the specific animal. Deer? Elk? Krampus. Yeah, this, this, uh, the picture is just animal tracks. Cra- yeah, just uh, animal, animal tracks. tracks. Animal tracks. The next night, the same thing happened. I got up in the middle of the night and thought I saw movement in the blackness outside. This time I stood at the window and gazed out, straining straining my eyes to see, waiting for them to adjust to the night. For a long time I stared out into the snowy darkness, but couldn't see any movement. Then, just as I was about to turn away, I saw something lurch off to the right and disappear from view. Again it was too dark to make out the animal, but it could have been anything, maybe a coyote or something. In the morning, as I was getting out of the shower, I glanced out the window and noticed tracks behind the garage. I couldn't tell what they were from the bathroom, so I got dressed, put on my coat and went outside. When I got up close, my heart practically stopped. They weren't tracks. They were footprints. Really small footprints. Yep, really small footprints. (laughs) I followed them across the backyard and they disappeared into the ditch out back. I stood there in the snow, not knowing what to do. What could I do? Call the cops and tell them I found footprints in the snow. The last couple of nights I was too scared to leave my room. 
If it had been David out there in the snow, it meant he could follow me anywhere. No matter where I moved, he could find me. I felt felt helpless. I flew back to New York after, the day after Christmas. Back in my apartment, I had, it seemed like I was at square one yet again. I've tried everything I can think of. I've saged my apartment. I've hired a medium. Nothing has worked. And worse, I still feel him at night, watching me from different corners of my room, always getting closer and waking up right before something happens. For the past few nights, I've been using that app that takes photos every couple of minutes, but nothing has shown up. For whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to work anymore. But I've left it running just in case. It's picked up absolutely nothing, save for one thing from last night. Last night was particularly bad. I felt sick and had nightmares all night. I dreamed that David was hovering in the corner by the ceiling, far off the ground. He was mouthing something, but I couldn't hear any words. Then he was hovering above my bed, staring down at me, his mouth moving faster than it should be. I couldn't move. I could only look up at him. Suddenly, he plummeted downwards, and I felt this huge pressure crash into my chest. I woke up gasping. The wind completely knocked out of me. I sat up and looked around frantically, heaving for air, but there was nothing. When I caught my breath, I retrieved my phone from the dresser. The photo roll showed nothing of note, save for the last photo taken a moment before. Oh, oh. Oh, that's creepy. That's the worst photo by a long shot for me. Because that's motion. The photo is... It looks like David plummeting down at me. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm at a loss here. I just don't know. January the 16th, 2018. Sorry for the long delay. Honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to tweet again. After what happened a couple of weeks ago, everything stopped. Well, sort of. I wasn't having dreams anymore and I was feeling better. I was sleeping through the night again. Actually, I was feeling great. I still do, but things have been sort of weird too, it's hard to explain. I'll try, but I don't know if any of it makes sense. Basically, as good as things have been for the past couple of weeks, I can't shake the feeling that something is off. Like, I've been sleeping fine, and I've lots of energy during the day, but sometimes I seem to sort of... lose time. Like, I look up at the clock and realise a whole hour has gone by and I don't remember any of it. Or I'll mishear someone and ask them to repeat what they said, but they'll say they didn't say anything. Little stuff like that. But after what I've been through, that's not a big deal. Despite all this, I feel ready to put it all behind me. So on Sunday, I opened Twitter intending to update you all that it was over, or at least I thought so. I just wanted things to go back to the way they were, and it seemed like they had. I was writing something to that effect, but I noticed way more notifications than usual. I swiped my mentions and saw that everyone was tweeting to me about something I had posted on my Instagram story the day before, saying they saw something weird. The stories are expired now, but I have the screenshots, and I don't know how to explain it. Long story short, I went to brunch on Saturday with a friend. I posted a few photos to my story, and they were fairly unremarkable. They're totally boring brunch photos. I posted one more photo of me and my friend before leaving, and that was that. But the next day I had a zillion messages about the third photo I posted. People had taken screenshots and sent them to me. This is what somehow got uploaded to my Instagram story. Oh, Oh, I don't even know what I'm looking at there, but it looks really weird. Like, yeah, the extra eye that's over his eye. Also looks a bit like Gollum. Oh, that's weird. I have no clue what happened. It looked perfectly fine on my phone when I uploaded it. I'd say it was just a glitch, but I can't make sense of what's happening with my face. Maybe I can. I, I know what it looks like. What it probably is. But I don't know if I care anymore. I really just want things to be normal again. And things feel normal enough right now. I don't know. I guess I'll keep you updated if something else happens. January the 28th, 2018. Adam Ellis posts a video on Twitter. With no text. No caption. It's a video taken from the floor of his cat crying at the door. February 3rd, 2018. Adam Ellis post a tweet that simply says everything is fine no punctuation nothing february 14th 2018 please don't worry about me i'm okay and everything will be just like it was before well that's really creepy that's a creepy text and then a video again taken from the floor of adam ellis's cat crying at the door no text no explanation march the 12th 2018 for everyone asking if i'm alive i'm doing okay It's been pretty quiet around here lately, and I've been trying to focus on work. Of course I'll keep you updated if anything strange happens, but for now I'm staying busy with drawing and other projects. Well, that's it. I haven't posted anything else. Oh, that's weird. He has not posted about David since, only in response to people being like, What the fuck happened? Where's the end of the story? And he's just like, Nothing's happened. 
Oh, go back up a couple of tweets. That one. Please don't worry about me. I'm okay. And everything will be like it was before. Smiley face. Ugh! That's so creepy. So, the last one's not so creepy because it sounds a bit more realistic. But it's So just... this is one of the most ingenious marketing ploys that I have ever seen. I think you're probably right. So what's interesting about this story is that only recently in the past couple of weeks, couple of months... Adam Ellis has got a movie deal about Dear David. So the story is being turned into a film. When Adam Ellis started tweeting about Dear David, he had 70,000 followers. Now he has well over a million. Yeah, just so that everything is fine to it, just to put that into reference, got 25,000, 25,500 likes. Alone. Alone. So that's People, when he tweeted that tweet saying everything is fine, people were literally writing back going, okay, David. <laughs> <laughs> so... I believe that Adam Ellis is a genius and he either, two ways that this happened, I believe that he either started this from his own brain, like he had an idea and he rolled with it to see who'd pick it up, or he was approached by a company or a film company to create this Dear David story. And he's the perfect person because he's a BuzzFeed person. Yeah. So he would have that... He's um, already got a starting base of followers. He's got a starting base of followers, but he isn't too famous where it would just be ridiculous and you think they were having a breakdown. So what did you think of the story? It's terrifying. Like, it's the just second, there's, what, oh, Last week's one was so tame. So tame compared to this. This is really gross. But there was a couple of flags for me. Go on, what were your flags? I'll tell you mine in a second. The, fall in, the, the photo that I thought was really like terrifying, that one where he's clearly in motion... If you look very carefully at the end, at the back, at, at around where David's feet would be, I'm pretty sure you can see his hand as if someone is holding the doll. Or throwing it. Or throwing the doll. So that was one of the flags for me. And the other thing is, I'm pretty sure I've seen dolls that look like David. Where? Like you, It's like, they're like, like Rosie and Jim dolls, like that kind of thing. Yeah, he does look a bit like that. Um, the one that, the bit that gets me is the, the, the fact that when you see those images of David in the bedroom... He has to use images because the cat motion camera sensor thing won't stretch to his bedroom. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's 2000 and what well, it was, 2017. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course it would stretch to your bedroom or you'd find a way to make it work. So I think it's interesting that he has to do photo stills. But so you never see an actual video of David. You can only see photo stills of him. Super clever regardless. Oh, re- regardless. Because it's just enough to keep people going. Like I tweeted Adam Ellis last week and I said um, about the episode and I said um, regardless of whether or not this is true, Adam Ellis knows how to spin a yarn. Like this story, even reading it now, I was like, and I read it yesterday. And when I read it yesterday, I had that hot, prickly, sick to your stomach fear Yeah, reading it. Because it's just brilliant. It's genius. And her, it is great. Like, it's not horrific, it's word, but it is like, it is tingly. Like, But I just think this story is absolutely genius. Yeah, it's brilliant. And the fact that he's still maintaining that it's real. Yep. So when he tweets about it now, he's like, I have no updates because I can't control when this happens. But people are getting really precious about it and literally being, you know, I was watching, when I was researching, I was watching YouTube videos where people were like, Adam Ellis owes it to his fans to explain what happened with David. And it's like, fuck off. Like, Let's, you're mental. Okay. Like, this is a man tweeting I about- understand that. And... I think potentially I'm along the lines with you. As terrified as I was going through that, I think it's probably an excellent viral marketing campaign. Oh, absolutely stunning. In which case, he's obviously not going to sell anything, say anything because that will give away the film. Yeah. On the other hand, if it was a genuine paranormal experience, which says you could, you could question whether yeah. it might be, if it just finished, there's really nothing to say. If your poltergeist just stops terrorising your house, what more do you write about it? But you remember when the Blair Witch Project came out and they pitched it as really that it was really found footage and that was the kind of first found footage film of its time that was a mouthful first found footage film of its time (laughs) that made a fucking fortune and it cost them a pittance to make and it was because they did this amazing marketing scheme where it was just this is real found footage and people believed it so it's I think it's an incredible story I love it I think it's terrifying and brilliant and like we did Last week, I will put all the photos and videos up on social media so that you can see them. And I'll put them on the Facebook group and on Instagram. Um, Last 
week on Instagram, I grouped them like as cat photos, the Japan photos and whatever. So you can see them. Honestly, look at the photos. Fucking hell. They're like as far as if they're if they're a hoax or if it's a vi- I don't think it's a hoax. I don't think that's fair. But if it's a no, viral it's, yeah, yeah. marketing sure. campaign, shitting hell, it's genius. Okay. So taking a slightly different approach. Yep. Let's say it's real. Yeah. Ooh. I can't what, even think what is David? Real. What do we think David is? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't. I cannot answer that question because the the idea of this being a real situation that happened to another human being just terrifies me too much. It's fucking awful. Do you know what's really terrifying about it to me? What is that? If this ghost is out to kill you, yeah. Why is it taking him so bloody long to do anything? <laughs> Do you know, no, but that's, that's like really powerful, isn't it? Because you're almost waiting for it to happen. Like yeah. he's, Adam is scared because he thinks this ghost is going to kill him. Yeah. And he hasn't killed him yet. Yeah. I'd just be like, I'll get on with it, David. I just give me, give, give it a rest now. Fannying about, hovering over my bed. Oh, I hate, I can't bear it. And in, in, the, it. in the image yeah. of his thing, the roof that David was standing on, was that a retail on it? Yeah, it was. Didn't he die from someone throwing a shelf on his head? <gasps> oh my god, he did! I didn't realize. I didn't think about that. See, it's awful, isn't it? Like I am actually petrified sitting here. And you know what? And it's night time. And stop, stop no. telling me things that are going to freak no, me out. No, this isn't going to freak you out. I also think that David is the biggest gangster of all time. I wasn't right. expecting you to say that. that he's was... made a threat to this guy that he's going to kill him. Yeah. Knows he's got a bit of fixation about the shelter. So the next time he walks past, is there's a hearse there. That's for you, mate. <gasps> I'm coming. I'm coming, coming for, for you. you. Coming for you, Dave. Right by your house, ready to pick you up. Dave, it's like the, the horse's head. Yeah. But not... Not as intimidating. <laughs> or no, he did get a head in his bed. That spine, that actual human head with the spine, remember? Yeah, but... I know that was a dream. But that was a point. dream. And it was quite hysterical as well. I feel like that's going to be quite a hard... If it is a movie, but I know we're talking about it in reality right now, but if it is a movie, that's going to be quite a hard scene to shoot without it being... It's going to have to be really graphic for it not to be funny. Yeah, because I had to cut you out of last week's episode because you laughed at it. You snorted with laughter when I said that. And I was because, trying to be really scary. Well, the spine's lying there, like, which is really gruesome, like a skull, like a severed head is still attached to the spine. And it's like... Yeah, and I love it. No, that's not what it said. It said it feels great. And 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 it it feels great. It was smiling. Yeah. It's just like, how are you going to make that without that being funny? Oh, I don't know. But anyway, let's leave it there for this week because the Dear David episodes have gone on a very long time. If you have liked the Dear David episode series, make sure that you tell your friends and family about it. Make sure that you come and follow us. We are on instagram at real life ghost stories we are on twitter at real ghost pod sorry i, I forgot oh, that was the only thing i actually know about we are on facebook real life ghost stories podcast it's a closed group on facebook you gotta answer some secret questions to get in and we're also on snapchat at real ghost pod i think on snapchat so come and follow us make sure you leave us reviews as well i want to see more reviews and have a fucking brilliant Christmas. And send us your stories because we will do a, a listener's the stories episode at some point. And oh, just, yeah, we if will. you just address them, dear David, that would be great. Don't do that. Dear David, fuck off. I just won't read it. But have a great Christmas. Enjoy it. Be wonderful. Be merry. Get drunk with your family. Get drunk with your friends. Get drunk on your own. Do whatever you like. But make sure you listen to us. Lots of love. Kiss, kiss. Did you know Nissan EVs have traveled 8 billion miles? Just a quick trip to Pluto and back. And what did we learn along the way? Well, that an EV can take on the world, like the Nissan LEAF. It can move racing forward and take your breath away, like the all-new Nissan Aria. We learned to make EVs that electrify. 8 billion miles driven by LEAF owners globally since 2010. Aria not yet available for purchase. Expected availability late fall. Subject to change.